Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to Naval Air Station North Island in beautiful Coronado, California, and the commissioning of USS John L. Canley. I am Commander Michelle Martinez, Executive Officer. It is my privilege to be your Master of Ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones. We are here today to celebrate this ship's namesake, United States Marine and Medal of Honor recipient, Gunnery Sergeant John L. Canley, and to commission the first ship named in his honor. 56 years ago, in January and February 1968, during the Battle of Way, then Gunnery Sergeant John L. Canley displayed the ultimate measure of leadership, courage, and devotion. To quote his Medal of Honor citation, for conspicuous gallantry, and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty in action against the enemy while serving as Company Gar Gunnery Sergeant, Company Alpha, 1st Battalion, 1st Marines, 1st Marine Division from 31 January to 6 February 1968 in the Republic of Vietnam. Company Alpha fought off multiple vicious attacks as it rapidly moved along the highway toward Way City to relieve friendly forces that were surrounded by enemy forces. Despite being wounded in these engagements, Gunnery Sergeant Canley repeatedly rushed across fire swept terrain to carry his wounded Marines to safety. After his commanding officer was severely wounded, Gunnery Sergeant Canley took command and led the company into Way City. At Way City, caught in deadly crossfire from enemy machine gun positions, he set up a base of fire and maneuvered with a platoon in a flanking attack that eliminated several enemy positions. Retaining command of the company for three days, he led attacks against multiple enemy fortified positions while routinely braving enemy fire to carry wounded Marines to safety. On 4 February, he led a group of Marines into an enemy occupied building in Way City. He moved into the open to draw fire, located the enemy, eliminated the threat, and expanded the company's hold on the building room by room. Gunnery Sergeant Canley then gained position above the enemy's strong point and dropped in a large satchel charge that forced the enemy to withdraw. On 6 February, during a first fierce firefight at a hospital compound, Gunnery Sergeant Canley twice scaled a wall in full view of the enemy to carry wounded Marines to safety. By his undaunted courage, selfless sacrifice, an unwavering devotion to duty, Gunnery Sergeant Canley reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. This crew is proud to serve on the newest warship in the United States Navy and to carry on the courageous legacy of Sergeant Major Canley and of those who have gone before us to repel tyranny and to preserve freedom around the world. We are honored to have two of Sergeant Major Canley's fellow Medal of Honor recipients with us today. Colonel Jay Vargas, United States Marine Corps retired, and Colonel Robert J. Mojieski, United States Marine Corps retired. Gentlemen, please stand and be recognized. We are also joined 
by several of Sergeant Major Canley's brothers in arms who fought beside him at the Battle of Way. Gentlemen, would you please stand and be recognized? Would all veterans and active duty service members and U.S. Merchant Mariners please stand? <laughs> Would all seafaring families please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, we will render honors to the Honorable Carlos del Toro. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Lieutenant Commander Robert L. Crabb, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy retired, our ceremony chaplain. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander William C. Messick, United States Navy, Executive Officer, USS John L. Canley, Gold Crew. <laughs> United States Marine and former Captain, Mr. Robert W. Shaw, our long glass presenter. <laughs> our Maid of Honor, Ms. Victoria Sargent, Escorted by Senior Chief Petty Officer Ronnie A. S. Rojas, United States Navy, Command Senior Chief, USS John L. Canley, Gold Crew. <laughs> Commander Mark A. Uakiu, United States Navy, Officer in Charge, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Bath Detachment, San Diego. Commander William Lopper, United States Navy retired, USS John L. Canley Commissioning Committee Co-Chairman. <laughs> Captain Dennis Dubard, United States Navy retired, USS John L. Canley Commissioning Committee Co-Chairman. Mr. Timothy J. Roberts, Strategic and Theater Sea Lift Program Manager. <laughs> Captain Micah D. Murphy, United States Navy, Commander, Military Sea Lift Command, Pacific. Captain Austin R. Hanbury, United States Merchant Marine, Ships Master, USS John L. Canley. <laughs> Mr. David J. Carver, President, General Dynamics, NASCO. Rear Admiral Thomas J. Anderson, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. <laughs> v 
Vice Admiral Brendan McLean, Commander, Naval Surface Forces and Commander, Naval Surface Force, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Sergeant Major Carlos A. Ruiz, United States Marine Corps, 20th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. <laughs> General Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., United States Marine Corps, retired, 19th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and 36th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Ms. Patricia A. Sargent, escorted by Senior Chief Petty Officer Julius C. Green, United States Navy, USS John L. Canley, Command Senior Chief, Blue Crew. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro, the 78th Secretary of the Navy, escorted by Captain Thomas A. Mays, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS John L. Canley. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Honors to the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Platform and Platform. Ready? Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors. Platform and salute.
retire the colors. Platform, ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Crabb will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. God, please hear our prayer today at this commissioning of the USS John L. Canley, ESB-6. We acknowledge, Lord, that your spirit is unfurled to every breeze from dawn to setting sun and in every clime and place. We acknowledge, too, Lord, that infused within the spirit of these ceremonies today are the echoes of ferocious battles and violent combats of 1968 Way City when Gunnery Sergeant John Canley and the Navy Marine Corps combat team of Alpha 1-1 stood in full battery against a desperate foe. The ship's motto, Courage Under Fire, declares a tradition of things endured and things accomplished, such as regiments hand down forever. For these reasons, and so many more, God, we ask for your blessings on our proceedings just now. Grant the current and future crews and embark warriors and all ships company. Grant them strong minds, great hearts, true courage and high competence. And when their time comes, Lord, as it surely must, to enter the crucible of testing and challenge, inspire them with the actions of Gunnery Sergeant Canley under fire. Be not far from them in times of trouble and war. Be their strength in times of fatigue and distraction. Be their fortress, their high tower, their shield in times of combat and violence. Be their hope and vision in times of peace. Please, dear God, bless their families too. Most of all, holy God, let them always be faithful as you, Lord, are Semper Fidelis. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Crabb. We would like to thank the Navy Band Southwest, 1st Marine Division Band, and the 1st Battalion 11th Marine Saluting Battery, and the Troy High School NJROTC Color Guard for their support this morning. Will the guests please be seated? <laughs> Ship's Company, Parade, Rest, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Carver. Good morning, Secretary Del Toro, Flag and General Officers, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to represent the 4,800 shipbuilders of General Dynamics NASCO at this commissioning ceremony. To the commissioning committee, thank you very much for your hard work in making this a very special day. The NASCO team consists of some of the most experienced shipbuilders in America, and we are truly honored and humbled to have built this incredible ship. The USS John L. Cannelly's remarkable capabilities will allow our servicemen and women to carry out a wide variety of missions, including, to name a few, mine countermeasures, counter piracy operations, maritime security operations, human humanitarian aid, disaster relief missions, special operations, and Marine Corps crisis response. The ship is designed to support nearly every rotary wing aircraft in the DOD inventory, including H-53 and H-60 helicopters, MV-22 tilt rotor aircraft, as well as allied aircraft all while serving off the fleet's third largest flight deck. 
She's also equipped with upgraded forward accommodations area that can support over 250 Embark personnel, the first ship in the class to have this expanded capability. Cannelly has substantial residual space, weight, and power to accommodate a wide range of current and future manned and unmanned surface, aerial, and undersea systems across multiple warfighting functions. In summary, displacing nearly 100,000 tons, this is a massive, capable, flexible warship that gives the fleet commanders the decision space they need throughout their operating theaters. What makes this ship extra special is its namesake and what he represents as an American and a Marine. Today, we are not only commissioning a ship, we are honoring Sergeant Major Cannelly for his lifetime of service and dedication to the United States of America. For those who knew Sergeant Major Cannelly, he lived and breathed the Marine Corps. Nothing made him happier than being around young sailors and Marines, hearing their stories and getting to know them. Sergeant Major Cannelly's story demonstrates the American ideas, courage, sacrifice, patriotism, citizenship, integrity, and commitment. Not just for his heroics in Vietnam, it's the way he lived his life. What we are commissioning today is not just a ship, it's an embodiment of the American unity and purpose, a beacon of hope and freedom to those in need around the world. To Captain Hanbury and Captain Mays and the future crew of the USS John L. Cannelly, the men and, women, men and women of General Dynamics NASCO wish you fair winds and following seas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carver. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Major Carlos A. Ruiz. I hope it's okay to take off my cover so I can see you, your beautiful faces. Hoorah. Good morning. That you knew that that was your car alarm is very impressive. That's, that's pretty quick and pretty awesome. Um, I think I'd like to start off with uh, Ms. Sergeant. Um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Uh, very special day and to represent the service here today. The Marines that are here and that are watching, uh, just thrilled and thank you. And now quickly, Mr. Secretary, thank you, sir. Thank you for bringing this beautiful ship to our beautiful Navy. It's awesome. And just a personal note from me, uh, thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of a man, for a man that wore the chevrons that a lot of us here have worn in decades of service. So thank you, sir. And uh, General Dunford, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful morning. Can I get a hoorah? Yeah, that was pretty close. You thought you were going to get away with it, didn't you? <laughs> Can I get a hoorah? I love it. Uh, Sergeant Major Cantley, he, uh, he earned this Medal of Honor over seven days. But he had 15 years of building Marines before these seven days started. 15 years of making warriors, getting them ready for the fight. And then on the back end of the seven days, he spent another decade plus continuing to serve in uniform. So the seven days is what, why the name is on this ship. But it's the 30 years of service in a uniform that brings most of us here today. But just like he was just mentioned, that after the 30 years, there are people here who knew John Canley never wore a uniform, but he showed all of us how to move, how to walk, how to show courage, how to do the right thing. If you were listening to the citation earlier this morning, the summary of action speaks of the many times that he would put himself in danger. One, to identify the enemy so his Marines can close with and destroy. Hoorah. And then two, he would walk with such calmness to pull his Marines out of danger those who were wounded, to get them out. But where did he learn this stuff from? Because that's not technically what we teach. We teach cover, we teach maneuver, when the conditions are set. You see, there's this generation that keeps building on each other, and they do some of the very similar things that John Connolly did. 
and that's care for each other, that it overtakes the procedure, what you're supposed to do, because Marines service members are in danger. And so when you think about that, and you're like, here is a gunnery sergeant of Marines putting himself in complete and utter danger to get after it. And you fast forward two generations, and not that long ago, you saw Marines being exactly like John Canley taught them to do. Standing on top of walls, closing in on the long war, doing the same thing that John Canley did, looking through a sea of people trying to find anyone else that they can save and pull to the other side of that wall. Where do we find these people? They come from you. They come from these communities, from us. Isn't that awesome? And so, now what? Now what do we do? John Canley gets to live forever. I mean, that's exactly what he should be, because we, people like us, get to spend the rest of our careers trying to live up to that fast, amazing career that he had in a life that he had, and we keep falling short. And although we wore the same chevrons, we were equal, but we were not the same. We were not even close. And so to the crew, and so to the audience that's here this morning, whether you wore a uniform today or you have ever wore a uniform today, we all will find ourselves in our own version of John Canley's seven days. But he has taught us how to go through that. That if it's about them, that if it's not about you, that if it means taking care of Marines and sailors, then courage follows. Ura? And he shows up at the right place at the right time. So to the crew, to anyone who had anything to do with building this ship, for those of you who would carry this ship forward, the Marines are ready to get on it and do some great stuff from it. Have a great rest of your morning. Ura Semper Fi. Thank you, Sergeant Major Ruiz. Ladies and gentlemen, General Joseph F. Dunford, United States Marine Corps, retired. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to join you this morning as we commission the USS John Canley. And, and I'm particularly humbled to be here with our Medal of Honor recipients, um, Secretary Del Toro, Sergeant Major Ruiz, our Vietnam veterans, and most importantly, Patricia Sargent and Victoria and the entire Canley family. I'd like to begin by recognizing the workforce here at NASCO. And, and Mr. Carver, thanks to you and the team for building an American-made ship that is worthy of the name John Canley. I'm here today because of a request that Sergeant Major Canley made before he passed away. I was the chairman when Sergeant Major Canley received the Medal of Honor in the White House, and we spent some time together in Washington, D.C. We also crossed paths on a number of other occasions as he continued to go out and visit Marines, inspire Marines, and lead Marines around the Corps. I feel really fortunate to have met a true Marine legend. And I learned more about Sergeant Major Canley from a good friend, Bob Shaw, who's here today as a member of the official party. In the late 1970s, he served with then Sergeant Major Canley and the 3rd Marines. In the decade before that, Bob's father served with then Staff Sergeant Canley in an Antos company. Both Bob and his dad described Sergeant Major Canley as the epitome of a Marine leader. And that's, of course, the sentiment that is shared by anyone who has ever served with Sergeant Major John Canley. In our initial engagement, I was struck by Sergeant Major Canley's sincerity and his humility. I was also struck by his level of fitness and his command presence. At 80 years old, he looked completely ready to deploy with an infantry battalion at that very moment. And I found myself, when he was in my office, looking down at my waistline and wondering, was I ready to go? And I was still in uniform. But in time, I gained an appreciation for his commitment to service in his character as well. And I would also learn how he viewed his Medal of Honor. His perspective was captured in an interview after the Medal of Honor ceremony. And the interviewer asked Sergeant Major Canley about his extraordinary heroism at Way City. The Sergeant Major responded, and I quote, my troops would follow me through their death. 
So if they might die, what am I supposed to do? From Sergeant Major Canley's perspective, what he did at Way City in Quezon was in the sticker price of a Marine gunnery sergeant. In addition to being understated, Sergeant Major Canley was uncomfortable being singled out for his actions in Vietnam. And he was also offended by the lack of recognition Vietnam veterans received when they returned home. It's something that we spoke about at length. So today, in addition to recognizing Sergeant Major Canley's heroism, I'd like to recognize the broader legacy of John Canley and his fellow Vietnam veterans. If Sergeant Major Canley was with us today, I know he would deliver a similar message. As everyone knows, our Vietnam veterans fought an unpopular war during a very turbulent time in our nation's history. And when they came home, there were no speeches, there was no ceremonies, and there were no parades. And the Hollywood caricature of a Vietnam veteran was of a draftee serving against his will who came home and didn't quite fit in. Of course, the facts tell us something completely different. 75% of veterans in Vietnam, Vietnam veterans were volunteers who served simply because they thought it was the right thing to do. In their record of honor, courage, and commitment at places like Way City and Quezon, that record speaks for itself. And when Vietnam veterans came home, they became political leaders, chief executive officers, policemen, firemen, teachers, and for decades, they were our scout leaders, our coaches, and our mentors. And a personal note, I grew up in the shadow of Vietnam veterans. For me, men like John Canley were the big kids on the corner growing up. In the 1970s, they were my, officer, my instructors at Officer Candidate School. They were my platoon sergeants when I was a platoon commander, and they were my confidants when I needed leadership advice. Across the Corps, John Canley and those Marines who stayed in uniform after the war helped us overcome the readiness and social challenges of the 1970s. They assumed positions of leadership, and they built the Corps that won the Cold War and Desert Storm. And I'm equally confident that the lessons learned from Way City saved lives in places like Fallujah and Ramadi. Ladies and gentlemen, it took our nation a while to recognize it, but our Vietnam veterans have left us a very proud and rich legacy. John Canley and his fellow Vietnam veterans guided our military through tough times. They helped our country mature, and they reminded us that freedom requires sacrifice and that service to our nation is honorable. Both points that are good to remember during these challenging times. So to John Canley and the Alpha 1-1 Marines that are gathered here today and to all Vietnam veterans, thank you. And I hope that among other things, this ship behind me reminds me that you are in fact welcome home. In closing, I have a simple message for the captain and the crew. We've named this ship the Canley in honor of Gunnery Sergeant John Canley's actions from 31 January to 6 February 1968. And I know that you'll ensure future generations of young sailors and Marines are inspired by his selfless and courageous leadership. I have no doubt about that. But don't let Sergeant Major Canley's life be reduced to one brief period of his service, however heroic. This ship should sustain the memory of Sergeant Major Canley's nearly three decades of service in uniform and his continued service, leadership, and example after taking off the uniform. This ship should sustain the memory of a humble, civil, a humble servant leader who left a le legacy of Marines, some here today, that are proud to be called Canley Trained. And this ship should remind us of Sergeant Major Canley's last message to Captain Mays. Those of you who know him know he was pretty economical in the use of words. And he simply turned to Captain Mays and said, take care of the troops. And that's what this ship ought to remind us to do, to take care of the troops. Once again, thank you so much for the privilege of being here, Semper Fidelis, and to the crew of the USS John L. Canley, and to those that will sail the border, fair winds in following seas. Thank you, General Dunford. Ladies and gentlemen, our principal speaker, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro, the 78th Secretary of the Navy. Good morning, San Diego. First, let me start off by thanking the chaplain 
for providing us all perfect weather. <laughs> you know, the Sergeant Major thanked me for allowing him to speak today as if somehow that was not going to be an option. But I will assure you that this is the last time that I speak behind the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps as well as the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Thank you both for your extraordinary, impactful words uh, for all of you here today. It is a great honor for me to be your 78th Secretary of the Navy in service to all the men and women who serve in our Navy and our Marine Corps today. Before I begin my speech, let me just simply say, courage under fire. Every American today here at this ceremony and across this great land that we call America has to be proud of the men and women who serve in our Navy and our Marine Corps. Because if we honor the Sergeant Major for everything he did throughout those seven days and throughout his entire life, we have to recognize that he served as an inspiration to the over 40,000 Marines that are deployed today around the globe. One third of our fleet is underway. And in the Red Sea over the last 90 days, our sailors and our Marines have acted bravely with courage under fire, the way that I think Sergeant Major would have wanted them to do. So I'm extremely proud of each and every one of them. You should be as well. And I thank, on behalf of the President, the Secretary of Defense, and myself, all of you, the American people. And I encourage you to continue supporting these brave men and women. And I encourage you all to reach out to your own members in the House of Representatives and ask them to pass the supplementals that are necessary over the next few weeks to keep the government open, to keep all these brave men and women employed and supported the way they deserve to be, as well as our fellow brothers and sisters in Ukraine who are so bravely today fighting for democracy, not just for themselves, but for all of us around the world, so that democracy will always reign free everywhere. Thank you. It's great to be here in Coronado. Thank you. At the commissioning of this, our fleet's newest expeditionary sea base, USS John Canley. And I'll tell you that when this ship was first being thought of, nearly 30 years ago or so, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of it. And I will tell you that over these past 20 years, I have become the biggest fan of these expeditionary sea-based ships. So to you, David, and you know that I built a ship of our own in a shipyard down south and lived in a shipyard for a year and a half, this is hard work. And there's not enough ways to thank your workers here at NASCO for the spectacular job that they've done. So to all the shipyard workers, thank you so very much. I extend, again, a warm welcome to our ship sponsor and Sergeant Major Canley's daughter, Miss Patricia Sargent, as well. As you know, according to Navy tradition, the ship sponsor's spirit and presence guides the sailors and the Marines and the merchant mariners that live and work and fight on board these great ships. And I am confident from all that I know about your father and yourself and your granddaughter that you all, his granddaughter, that you all will be spectacular sponsors and maid of honors for the brave men and women who serve on this ship. I also want to welcome the rest of Sergeant Major Canley's family, including Victoria Sargent, who I mentioned, but his sister Annie, and all of his grandchildren, nieces and nephews here with us today. It's wonderful to be with you all. Welcome also to our distinguished guests, including Mr. Carver again, General Dunford, sir, your leadership of our military service when you served, and our Marine Corps when you served as Commandant was truly spectacular. Thank you, sir. And to Sergeant Major Canley's Marine Corps Company during Vietnam, Alpha Company who are able to join us today. Thank you for your presence, for your selfless service to our country and protection of the freedoms that we hold most dear. Vietnam veterans are particularly important to me. I came here as a Cuban American refugee and my first home was in a rat infested tenement building 
on 42nd Street between 11th and 12th Avenue in New York City. And my first memory of Vietnam, when I was only four or five years old actually, was this endless line of soldiers who stood across the street on 42nd Street. And although I was too young to fully comprehend and understood what it was that they were doing there with their satchels, they always seemed to be just waiting in line, as Marines know how to do sometimes, right? Um, but it was when I became older, and when I became secretary just a couple of months ago, I asked my historian to actually look into that. Why was it that those soldiers were waiting in line? And they were waiting in line to go to Vietnam on troop ships just like this, as they had before during Korea and World War II. That was my first understanding of what it meant to go to war. And throughout my life, I have vowed to honor their service. First, by joining the service myself, obviously, and I served for 22 years, by visiting Hawaii twice as well, too, and seeing firsthand the struggles that they actually went through. And not just to pay them tribute, as we here, do here today, but to learn the lessons of what they went through, of what you went through, and to vow to apply those lessons so that our men and women today in service in uniform, whether it be the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Army, the Air Force, will never again have to struggle in a similar fashion. So thank you. Thank you to all of you who served in Vietnam for your service. <laughs> Commanding Officer Captain Mays and Master Captain Hanbury, you are the two luckiest people on the face of the earth today. Because you get to command this great ship. And I know what that's all about, and it's an extraordinary experience. As he told you, take care of your troops. That's what matters most. And finally, to the crew of USS John Cannelly, the rest of our Navy team and our partners in industry, thank you for your unwavering support. As was said, behind me is 784 feet of warfighting steel, named after an incredible warfighter. Sergeant Major Canley's philosophy was, if today's my day, then come get me. And as you heard today, he certainly embodied that philosophy. This ship is a United States ship, a warfighting ship, which may be called to sail into harm's way one day. USS John Canley increases the capability of our Navy, our Marine Corps, our military sea lift team, strengthening our maritime dominance in an uncertain time when the world looks to the United States more so than ever for guidance, strength, and leadership, and we must deliver that to the rest of the world. I want to take this time to talk about the importance of sharing stories as well, especially incredible stories of Sergeant Major John Canley, who represents the very best of America. Black History Month, of course, is an opportunity to tell those stories and pay tribute to the contribution of African American service members and civilians who selflessly dedicated their lives to this nation, courageously so. While the legacy of African American service members in the sea services spans centuries, their stories often went untold, and they did not receive the recognition that they often deserved. This is certainly the case with Robert B. Smalls and Charles J. French, for whom I named a cruiser and a destroyer. This was also the case of Sergeant Major Canley, who was originally awarded the Navy Cross for his heroic actions at Hue City. And thankfully, following an Alpha Company reunion many years later, his fellow Marines and friend John Legato embarked on a journey to ensure that this humble leader received the credit that he so deserved. This process of upgrading his award was arduous, with seemingly unsurmountable administrative hurdles and miles of bureaucratic red tape. But in 2018, 50 years after the Battle of Way City, Sergeant Major John Canley receives the Medal of Honor. And he became the first African American service member to receive the Medal of Honor while still living. We as Americans have the unique opportunity to tell the stories of Robert B. Smalls, Charles J. French, and now John L. Canley and an obligation to learn from them. Because we can not only grow as a nation, as a fighting force, by learning from our history. Ultimately, our Navy, our Marine Corps, our nation are made stronger by their diversity, diversity of background, of experience, and diversity of thought, which ensures that our ability to outthink, outpace, and outmaneuver our adversaries 
forever remains strong. Just as history matters, representation matters too. African Americans make up 16% of our Navy and over 10% of our Marine Corps. It is imperative that future generations see themselves in our sea services, that they see a man from Caledonia, Arkansas, grow up to become a war hero, or a woman from Rochester, New York, become the first female chief of naval operations, or even an immigrant from Cuba to become the first Cuban-American Secretary of the Navy. Because the next Medal of Honor recipient, or CNO, or SICNAV, might be in this audience today, as the world's problems grow increasingly more complex and stability more uncertain, we need to tap into America's most precious resource, all of its people, to solve the issues of the future. And if any of you who've served before want to come back into the service, or any of you young men and women want to join the service, come see me after the ceremony. In fact, how about standing up right now and I'll issue you the oath of office. <laughs> I'd be happy to do so. Now, I know that the spouses of some of you veterans want you to come back into the service, too. So we can accommodate you as well, too. Now, because better technology and more ships will go to waste without the courageous Americans who will answer the call of service to their country, the impact of Sergeant Major Canley's legacy, of course, will indeed extend far beyond Black History Month. It is my firm belief that USS John Canley will serve as an inspiration to all who follow in her wake. It is my sincere hope that for those who come aboard this ship, those in the United States Navy, the Marine Corps, Military Sealy Command, as they cross that bow, they are also challenged to live up to the unwavering devotion and duty of this ship's namesake and a special tribute to our merchant mariners. More merchant mariners died in World War II than anyone else. And today I'm proud that our United States Navy and Marine Corps is out there protecting not only the life of our own service members, but the life of those innocent merchant mariners from all over the world. We have a responsibility to protect them. I have no doubt that throughout his service, USS John Canley will display courage under fire. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a historic day. John Canley is joining the fleet and will fearlessly sail as part of the world's finest Navy, the world's most powerful Navy and Marine Corps. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything differently. I wish you all fair winds and following seas, especially these courageous men and women who will serve on board this ship. May God bless each and every one of you, your families, and the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. Sir, I'd be honored if you place John L. Canley in commission. Captain, place John L. Canley in commission. Aye, aye, sir. On behalf of the President of the United States and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place United States ship John L. Canley in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Executive, executive officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company, attention. The commission pennant in professional national navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies ban began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the mainmast head to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the large screens as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Navigator, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, ma'am. <laughs> Captain. 
Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS John L. Canley. Farewell. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Pers Military Personnel Command to Captain Thomas A. Mays, United States Navy. Subject, Bupers Order Number 9580 of 01 April 2023. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to USS John L. Canley as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of J USS John L. Canley, report for duty as commanding officer. Captain Hanbury, I relieve you, sir. Stand relieved. Captain Murphy, I am relieved. Very well. Vice Admiral McLean, USS John Canley is in commission and I am in command. Very well. <laughs> Executive Officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Detail, board, march. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, ma'am. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and the crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have Mr. Robert W. Shaw with us today. A Marine Corps veteran, former Marine Captain Shaw served with Sergeant Major Canley in the 1st Battalion, 3rd Marine Regiment. His father, also Robert Shaw, served with Sergeant Major Canley on Okinawa from 1962 to 1963. Mr. Shaw will pass the long glass to our first officer of the, jet, of the deck Chief Boson's mate, Catherine Rauschenberg, from Wahiwa, Hawaii. The Petty Officer of the Watch is Gunner's mate, third class, Sherry Mae Perez, from Nazlet, New Jersey. The Messenger of the Watch is Aviation Support Equipment Technician, second class, Bryston Croft, from Monroe, Louisiana. And the Boson's mate of the Watch is Boson's mate, first class, Davin Arce, from Eva Beach, Hawaii. Set the watch. On deck, section one. Ma'am, the watch is set. Very well. Detail, board, mark. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted today to have our sponsor with us, Ms. Patricia A. Sargent. She has opened her heart to this crew and has imbued the ship with her spirit and devotion. Patricia, I would be honored if you would join me up here and give the order to man our ship. Thank you, Captain Mays. I would like to bring my daughter, Victoria Sargent, up to the podium. She's the maid of honor of the ship. To be able to give the order, I need to give you some information in regards to my father and some insight into his thoughts and how he led. My father understood that greatness is not achieved by the individual. It is achieved by the courageous acts of the many. The Marines of Alpha Company 1-1 one, one are an example of that in what they achieved in the Battle of Way City. And in that battle, my father earned their Medal of Honor, which now resides on the USS 
John L. Canley. This ship will achieve greatness, but it will only do that by the courageous actions of the many. It is in honor of my father, my family, members of the One One, and the great people of the United States that I give the command. Officers and crew of the USS John L. Canley, man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS John L. Canley salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. John L. Canley, ready to. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS John L. Canley is manned and ready. Very well. Vassal McLean, USS John L. Canley is manned and ready. Reports for duty. Very well. Secretary Dortoro, Chris Brisson, break your flag, sir. Break my flag, sir. Aye, aye, sir. XO, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Navigator. Break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, ma'am. Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is flying proudly over USS John L. Canley. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Thomas A. Mays, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS John L. Canley. Ship's Company, Parade, rest. Good morning, everyone. And it's a glorious morning. All right. I am Captain Tom Mays, United States Navy, Commanding Officer of USS John L. Canley. Thank you so much to the distinguished representatives of our Navy, our community, and industry who have joined us here today. To the members who have joined me here on the platform, Rear Admiral Anderson, Commodore Murphy, Captain Dubard, Commander, uh, Commodore Ihuapa, uh, Commander Lauper, Mr. Carver, and my good friend Tim Roberts, thank you. Chaplain Crabb, thank you for your inspirational words. To Rear Admiral Peck, Commodore Keeler, and the Navy Triads and leadership that have joined us today, thank you for witnessing our elevation to your company. To the veterans of the Alpha 1-1, I salute you and all you did to keep the Gunny's legacy alive, to give him the recognition this nation owed him. To Captain Brad Coletti, Command Master Chief Cruz de los Santos, and all those sailors who've been part of our pre-com unit and moved on to the Navy, thank you. General Dunford, Colonel Mojieski, Colonel Vargas, and Sergeant Major Ruiz. Your presence here cements our ship's tight and eternal bond to serving the needs of the United States Marine Corps. Thank you. Secretary Dortoro and Vice Admiral McLean, I am blown away that we could garner your support, your time, and your presence on this significant day in the life of our ship. To my friends, mentors, and family, most especially my lovely wife, Kristen, my daughters Isabel and Gabrielle, and my son, Gunner's mate, Seaman Apprentice Dylan Mays. I would not be here without you and all you've meant to my life. I owe you everything. Thank you. To our sponsors, Trisha and Maid of Honor Victoria, I can hardly express how much you've meant to me, to these crews, and what you will mean to all the sailors who will crew your father's ship in all the years to follow. Our thanks will never be enough. Now, with all the niceties taken care of, I hope you'll excuse me as I have a personal conversation with my crews. Please, a little privacy, cover your ears, no listening. Right. Civilian Mariners, the Military Sea Lift Command, and the USS John L. Canley. Officers, chiefs, and sailors of blue and gold crews, pay heed. 785 feet by 164 feet. That is our vessel's footprint upon the seas but it is not the extent of her reach, nor the measure of her impact upon this world. The length, breadth, and endurance of that impact rests solely with you and I, with how we back one another, and how we handle our charge to care for this vessel, and how we approach our sacred duty to defend these United States. Our hull's legacy was forged in Arkansas in 1937. 
It was hammered into form alongside a very young, tall and imposing, but humble John Lee Canley, and then shaped by the U.S. Marine Corps in the travails of service. That legacy was tempered in fire at Hue in 1968. It is finally annealed in the form of this ship today. With the grace of God, our legacy will extend decades into the future with unknowable accomplishments and challenges etched into her hull. Today, you are on the shining precipice of those days to come, and I want you to survey all the myriad possibilities with anticipation, hope, and eagerness to do what you know is right. Y'all have just brought this ship to life. That's not just a metaphor to me. Her body is well and strongly built of American steel right here in San Diego. Her spirit lived upon this earth for 83 years before her first plank was laid, imbued with honor, courage, and selfless sacrifice by her namesake. But the lifeblood that pumps through her veins, that makes her move, that faces down the threats our nation is confronted by, that lifeblood is you. None of this works without you. I want you to take pride from that but also appreciate the weight of that responsibility. Our story together did not start today. For some of us, it began more than two years ago. So I know, I know you now. I know how hard you've worked to make this day a reality. I know your courage, your dedication, and your resiliency. I am both proud and humbled to be able to count myself among your ranks. But I know something you don't. I know you're each individually capable of even more, and together, like the stalks of bamboo that flank our crest, together we can accomplish feats far greater than the sum of our individual efforts. Looking back, you'll be amazed at what we have done and will do. ESP6, everyone who knows me knows I love a great story. We have it in us to add further still to the well-deserved honors heaped upon the name of John L. Canley. Let us sail from here to serve our embarked forces and excel at our mission to not just do the job, but to advance our story into epic history. Thank you. Ship's company, attention. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for a musical tribute to our ship's namesake, Sergeant Major John L. Canley, followed by the benediction. Let us pray. Almighty and most holy God, in you we trust. Remind us all, dear Lord, that none of us got here by accident. Thank you, Lord, for the high skill and amazing ingenuity of all those dedicated workers and planners and designers and engineers and everyone who contributed to this day and the USS John L. Canley ESB-6. Please, God, bless this ship and all the men and women who now serve and will serve aboard its decks. Please watch over their families. And now to the USS John L. Canley, its crew, all embarked personnel, and to all gathered here today, please receive the blessing. May the strength of God sustain you. May the power of God inspire you. May the hands of God protect you. May the way of God direct you and may the presence of God go with you this day and forever. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Crabb. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests.